Welcome to the Organic Chemistry Podcast, Dr. Brian Lloyd's Scribblecast of Organic Chemistry Lectures and Solutions to Homework Problems. Last lecture, we examined the functional group nomenclature of alkenes, alkynes, and alcohols. We're going to continue that by examining the nomenclature of amines. Amines are molecules that consist of a trivalent nitrogen. Nitrogen possesses three bonds. These bonds may extend to carbon or hydrogen atoms, and the nitrogen has a lone pair. So in order to be an amine, you must have a carbon and hydrogens here. Uh, if you have one carbon and two hydrogens, you're a primary amine. If there are two carbons, you're a secondary amine. If there are three carbons attached to nitrogen, you are a tertiary amine. Now, in the same methodology that we use for alcohols, we're going to examine both the IUPAC and common nomenclature of amines. Now, the simplest amine we're going to look at is, of course, based on the molecule methane. In IUPAC nomenclature, if we have an amine derived from methane with two hydrogens off of it, we drop the E of methane and we add the term or suffix amine. And so the IUPAC name is methanamine. The common name takes a substituent approach for the alkane by naming it as an alkyl amine. It is named as one word, and so methane becomes methyl, and we have the suffix amine. And so methylamine, or methylamine, is one word and represents the common name. Now this likewise continues as the chain grows. Ethane would be derived as ethanamine, common name ethylamine. Propane would be propylamine. Um, let's try isopropyl. What if I have this group? Well, in IUPAC, this would be, a longest carbon chain is 3, with the nitrogen at 2. So this would be a 2-propanamine, or propane hyphen 2-amine. As I have stated, the common name for this molecule is isyl, one word, propylamine, because it is an isopropyl group. So isopropylamine. What if instead of having the methyl of the propane attached to a carbon, but the methyl was actually off of the nitrogen? What do you do to indicate a substituent in IUPAC on the nitrogen? So off of the nitrogen we have a methyl. So it's no longer an isopropyl group. Hmm. What is the IUPAC name? Well, the longest carbon chain clearly is the ethane, and so this becomes ethanamine. But we have a methyl. So this becomes a methyl in IUPAC. Ethanamine. The question is, how are we going to indicate that the methyl group is on the nitrogen? We do so by using a capital N. We say N-methyl, and we treat the N as a number. So we uh, put commas between multiple ends and 
numbers and we use hyphens to separate the N from the word. So N-methyl means the methyl group is off of nitrogen. If we were to name this using common nomenclature, we would have ethylmethylamine or ethylmethylamine. We name the alkyls all in one word, ethyl methyl amine. You just name the alkyls attached to the amine. Let's uh, take a look at what happens if you have two amines on a chain. As I have stated for alcohols, this nomenclature varies from what we know about dienes. And if you remember simple dienes, let's just use a simple analogy. Molecule similar to what we've used previously. Pentane chain with two double bonds in it. A pentane that has alkenes in it becomes a pentene. If there's two alkenes, it becomes a pentadiene. We have one, two, three. This is a penta one, three dying. Now just as we've seen in alcohols, if we replace the double bonds and in this case we'll put NH2's on We find the longest carbon chain with the highest priority group and we number it so as to give the priority groups the lowest possible numbers. This is a pentane chain. If we number from the right, one, two, three, a one, three is definitely better than a three, five. Now, we don't say a penta one, three diamine. Just like all diol, amine will be diamine when there's more than one. If there were more than two, it would be triamine, tetramine, so on. But just like in alcohols, we have to give the full root. And so this would be 1,3-pentane diamine. And so it's a bit different than what we're familiar with in alkene nomenclature or alkyne. If you use the nomenclature which inserts numbers, you have pentan 1,3 diamine. Both of these are accepted in this course. The molecule, benzene, has a special name that's accepted by IUPAC if there's an NH2 attached to it. This molecule is called aniline. You must memorize that name and make sure you know it. Okay. The common name, of course, would be phenylamine or phenylamine. That would be a common name. Now, aniline can have substituents on it, and if there was one methyl off of the nitrogen, we'd call it N-methylaniline. But what do you do if there are two methyls off of it? in place of both hydrogens. 
Well, just as numbers are used to localize methyl groups, and if there were two methyls off of the same position, you would say 6,6-dimethyl, we indicate two methyls off of the nitrogen by stating N, comma, N, dimethyl. Anine. Excellent. Now here's a trick question. Do you remember what this molecule was called from our alcohol lecture? That's right, it was called phenol. So if the alcohol on the benzene is referred to phenol, and the NH2 group off a of benzene is referred to as aniline, what would you call a molecule that had both an NH2 and an OH off of the same benzene ring. Well, the best nomenclature would involve assigning the highest priority group to the root. So I must look at my prioritization chart that I gave you in class, and I provided on the previous podcast lecture, and determine whether HO is higher priority than NH2, or whether NH2 is higher priority than HO. If you look at that chart, you will discover that the alcohol is higher priority. What that means is the root name phenol takes precedence over the root name aniline. And so this molecule would be called a phenol. Now, the question becomes, what do we call NH2 groups when they're not in the root, but they come out front as a prefix? In this case, the NH2, when it's no longer a priority group and not going to be contained in the root, must be given the prefix amino. So this is an amino phenol. Now, the question is, where is that amino group? I must number from the priority group to give the priority group the lowest number. I don't say one phenol because no matter where the OH is on the ring, I start numbering one there. The lowest number I can then get to the amine is four. One, two, three, four. So this is four amino phenol. Four amino phenol is much better than saying four hydroxy aniline. However, if on a test you did say 4-hydroxyaniline, you would get part marks. It's just not the best name. Let's look at a name where aniline is the priority group. Do you remember the name of this molecule? When there's a CH3 off of benzene. It had a special name. Indeed, it is called toluene. Toluene is a special name accepted by IUPAC. What happens if a methyl group is on the same benzene ring as an NH2? Once again, I must assign priority to the nomenclature. Who is higher priority, a methyl or an NH2? If you check your prioritization chart, you will discover that the NH2 is higher priority. And hence, aniline should be the best name. Much better than toluene. And hence, you would say 4-methyl 
paneling. Now, just to throw a monkey wrench into the works, I'd like to point out that sometimes in IUPAC, there are special names that are accepted even above our prioritization scheme. So, if you had said for amino toluene, you'd get part marks. It wouldn't be the best. For methylaniline would be better. But there is actually a name that can be assigned to this molecule that has been accepted by IUPAC. And it combines the amine concept with toluene. This is called toluidine. And you could say 1,4 toluidine, or as it's sometimes indicated, okay, or better, 4 toluidine. Because it must be 1, the 1 can be dropped, so you could say 4 toluidine as well. The two groups, one's at 1, one's at 4. This pattern is also sometimes indicated by the expression paratoluidine. So here's an example. Okay, the para is more common. So we'd use 1,4,4 toluidine. There's a, here's a case where there is a name, 4 toluidine, which is accepted by IUPAC and sometimes takes precedent, precedence over even the best prioritization name. Okay? So uh, sometimes you get a curveball thrown at you and uh, it just generates a name that surprises you, a special name that you have to memorize. So this is an example of a 4 toluidine. Okay? Um, let's move on now and look at another functional group. Let's take a look at the aldehyde functional group. Now in the aldehyde nomenclature we are attempting to name molecules that have a C double bond O and an H off them. Now they must have at least one H. The other group R, R can equal some carbons like methyl or ethyl or H. So you could have two H's off. But to be an aldehyde you must have at least one H. The simplest aldehyde of course is the molecule that has two H's. A single carbon and hence it's derived from the molecule methane. In order to provide an IUPAC name for the molecule derived from methane, we drop the E and we add FAL. So this becomes a methanal. Now we'll be covering common nomenclature of aldehydes later on in the course. The trick here is methanal and the alcohol root methanol look so similar, you have to really make sure that you make the A look like an A and not an O. If it appears to be an O, you will be marked as incorrect on a quiz, even if you meant it to be an A. So be very careful with that. Okay, now this molecule, we'll be covering common nomenclature later, and of course uh, the common name for this molecule is formaldehyde, but you don't need to know that at this time. If there are two carbons, the molecule is called ethanol. Three carbons, propanol, and so on. You may ask the question, where is one? Why did I not put a one in front of my methanol? Well, in fact, I could have placed the one, or I equally could have inserted it and said methan one al. 
There'd be nothing wrong with that. So why did I not do this? It's because the requirement of having a hydrogen off of the carbonyl places the aldehyde always at the end of the chain. That means when there is just the aldehyde, it has to be one. If the carbonyl shifts further into the train, it is no longer an aldehyde. Let's look at the case of propanal. So here's the molecule propanal. Why do I not have to place number one? Is because if I try to make two propanal, it is no longer an aldehyde. I don't have to worry about saying number one because if the C double bond is at the second carbon, since there's no H off of the C double bond, it's not an aldehyde. It is a new functional group. We haven't covered the naming of yet, called ketone. We'll be looking at ketones next. So in the case of aldehyde nomenclature, it's quite simple. We replace the E on the alkane root with Al, and we don't even have to put the number one in. Now let's examine what we have if we have two aldehydes. The only way you can get two aldehydes on a carbon chain if, is if one is at each end. And if we do that, we use the full alkane root, just like we did for alcohols and amines. And so a three carbon chain becomes a propane. And I could say, because the aldehyde is at one and three, Propane 1, 3, and 2 aldehydes will be di-al. Notice, of course, it has to be propane 1, 3. And so just saying propane di-al is acceptable. Notice the E on propane was dropped in front of the hyphen because it's a silent vowel. Why don't we go on, well actually before we do, let's put on some substituents on an aldehyde chain and see what that would be called. And why don't we add some substituents from our previous two functional groups, alcohol and amine. So let's make a chain. Let's place a double bond in it. Let's put on uh, yeah, so let's change this to a CH2, put an HO here, put an alcohol group there, and then we'll have a CH with an amine here, and then let's add our aldehyde group. Now, in IUPAC nomenclature, you find the longest carbon chain with the highest priority group. Give the lowest possible number to the priority group. Well, aldehydes are higher priority than either alkenes, alcohols, or amines. And so the root name will have the aldehyde ending AL. We number the chain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this again is a pentane, becoming a pentanal. Because it has an alkene and there's no substituent name for alkenes, the alkene is retained in the root and becomes a pentene. So we have what is called a pentene al. The al has to be the one, but you could incorporate it. So it would be perfectly correct to say pent 3 -ene. one al perfectly fine. Or you could also say pent 
in L. You notice the silent E of pentene. There's no E placed here, no E placed there, because the E is silent and it would precede a vowel. So it's dropped. Now I have to name my substituents. You were told that amines, when they are substituents, get the name amino. What about alcohols? Alcohols, when they are substituents, are called hydroxy. So it looks like we have a 2-amino and a 5-hydroxy. I have to place the 5 on the hydroxy because the hydroxy could have come anywhere along the chain. As such, there's no guarantee that a hydroxy is at the end of the chain, so it has to be numbered. Which comes first, A or H? Well, for alphabetizing, the A comes first. So beside the pentene, I'll have my 5-hydroxy. And then my 2-amino. And so this molecule would be called 2-amino-5-hydroxy-pent-3-ene-1-al, or 2-amino-5-hydroxy-pent-3-ene-al. Both names would be acceptable. So you begin to see that the only names retained in the root, other than the priority group, is going to be the enes and ines. And that can make the root name very long, especially if you have a lot of enes and ines. If they are lower priority groups, amine groups come out in front as amino, and hydro uh, alcohol groups come out front as hydroxy. Now, what do you call a molecule that has a benzene with an aldehyde off of it? Since we've learned phenol with alcohols, aniline with NH2, you should note that an aromatic benzene ring with an aldehyde group off of it in IUPAC is given the special name benzaldehyde, which, by the way, is also its common name, benzaldehyde. Excellent. Okay, let's press on. The next group we want to look at is ketones. Notice, ketones is spelled K-E-T. There is no Y. Uh, off, a common spelling mistake is students insert a Y between the E and the T. The ketone is similar to the aldehyde, except there is no H off the carbonyl. If you have a C double bondo, you have only carbons attached to it. So one of the simplest ketones, or the simplest ketone you can have, must have two carbons off of the C double bond O. And these two carbons is, are CH3. Now, this obviously is a three carbon chain. It's derived from the alkane propane. What do you call a ketone that's derived from propane? Well, we drop the E on propane and add on. So this becomes propanone. Count the number of carbons towards the carbonyl, one, two. So this is a two propanone. Or propan two ohm. Now, in this case only, you can drop the 2. Why is that? Well, if I move the C double bond O to the 1 position, I'm no longer ketone, I'm an aldehyde. So 2 propanone is the only possibility. And so you can get away with propanone. Because if you are a propanone, you have to be 2 propanone. There's no way it can be anything else. So all three names are acceptable, but if you are in doubt, put the two in. Now, there's a common name I want you to know for this molecule, 
and that is acetone. Yes, this is the molecule that's used as wash acetone. It's mixed with water in the lab, to, and we use it to clean glassware. This is molecule acetone, or 2-propanol. Likewise, the molecule 2-butanol can also have its number removed and can be just referred to as butanone. The reason again for this is no matter where the C double bond O appears, it is always 2-butanone. There's no way around it. So I can write it as butan 2 own 2-butanone, or just butan own But once you get to 5 carbons, the numbering becomes required. Because you can have a 2-pentanone or pentantuone. Or it is equally possible to have a 3-pentanone. And chemically, they are very different molecules. So here's pentan 3 -ohm. So you'll notice that you have to be careful once you start getting longer chains to designate the position of the ketone by number. Again, if you have more than one, ketone in a molecule, you use the full alkane root, in this case, five carbons, pentane, and for each own, you use the prefix di, so you have a dione. So this becomes a pentane dione. And so since it's at 2, 4, this is a 2, 4 pentane dione. Or you have a pentane two four dial. Okay. Now Here's an interesting dilemma. What happens if I have a molecule that has both a ketone in it and an aldehyde? Let's throw in an ene. Well, and let's add an ine just to mix it up a bit. Well, enes and ines will appear in the root, as always. Um, in order to find out which of these two functional groups also appears in the root, we have to go to our prioritization chart and look up whether aldehyde is higher priority than ketone or not. And so you should check your prioritization chart. If you do that, you will find aldehyde is higher priority, which means the ketone must come up front as a prefix. So let's generate the root, knowing that this is going to be an aldehyde. So this is, this count of carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is heptane, so the root's heptanal. It's got an ene, it's a heptenal, a heptenal, okay? And if we number it, so we can see clearly where our 
substituents appear. It's thusly. So I'm going to have a hept 4e Two i, and I could say one al, but since it has to be one, I'll just put hein i now. So this is a hep four in two i al. Now I need a prefix for the carbonyl, and actually the prefix we're going to use will symbolize an O with two bonds attached to something. That's what the prefix will mean, and that prefix is called oxo. If you see oxo, it means an O with a double bond to something, usually to carbon. Okay, so in this case, we have a 6-oxo. Now, what's really cool is the oxo functionality works for naming ketones or aldehydes. You'll notice if there was something higher priority than aldehyde, we could use an oxo for it and say 1-oxo. The only difference is... You get an aldehyde when the oxo is at the end of the chain, and you get a ketone when the oxo is in the body, main body of the chain. Okay, so there we have the nomenclature of aldehydes and ketones. The next functional group we want to look at is the carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid. Now, the carboxylic acid is a functional group which has the carbonyl C double bond O, but off of the C double bond O is an OH group. This is the carboxylic acid group. The carboxylic acid group is named by taking the alkane root, dropping the E, and adding oic acid. The simplest carboxylic acid is, of course, only one carbon long. And that is this molecule. And a one carbon alkane is a methane. And this guy is called methanoic acid. The acid is a separate word. If you have a two carbon alkane with a carboxylic acid functional group, then the two carbon alkane becomes ethanoic acid. Now, the reason I took the time to draw ethanoic acid is there's a common name here that I'd like you to know. And that is the common name acetic acid. An ethanoic acid molecule is also the acetic acid molecule. Now, that common name you will know. So that's common, acetic acid. And if we can continue along the chain, we get propanoic acid. Uh, carboxylic acids are similar to aldehydes in that they come at the end of the chain. If the C double bond O unit is placed in the chain, it's no longer carboxylic acid. Do you remember what this functional group is called? We're going to do its nomenclature next. This is called an ester. Esters are derivatives of carboxylic acids, but they are not carboxylic acids. So you'll notice I did not put one methanoic or one ethanoic. Because the carboxylic acid comes at the end of the chain, it by definition must have one, just like aldehydes. Now, two carboxylic acid functional groups Could appear in a chain. And when they do, you name them in the same way we did the aldehydes. 
or the alcohols or the amines, you've got to use the full alkane root. This is a four carbon chain, a four carbon alkane is a butane. Now indeed, I could say butane 1, 4 would be perfectly right, dioic acid. And again, acid's a separate word. But equally true is the fact that it has to be 1, 4. It cannot be a carboxylic acid and a butane unless the carboxylic acids are at the end of the chain. And so, it's perfectly fine to say butane dioic acid. And you may notice the reappearance of the silent E, the silent E that disappeared because of the hyphen. Now this is where I can point out what I brought up when I used the oxo definition and I mentioned oxo can be used for aldehydes or ketones. So let's, let's do that now. Let's use a molecule, do a molecule here, that has an aldehyde. So here's my aldehyde. Has a ketone. And just for the fun of it, let's put an amine on here. And I'm going to actually attach CH3, just to complicate things. And uh, let's put a CH2, a CHOH. CH2, and a carboxylic acid. So we're getting quite complicated. Now, find the longest carbon chain with the highest priority group. Who is at the top of your list in your substituent list of prioritization? You'll find it's the carboxylic acid even higher than aldehyde. In this case, that means carboxylic acid gets in the root, and all the other functional groups, the aldehyde, the ketone, the alcohol, and the amine, must be placed out front as prefix names, substituent names. I must number from the highest priority group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What's interesting is you might think aldehyde and ketone should have separate substituent names. But in fact, they use the same substituent. So before we develop the root name, let's take a look at the substituents. Oxo is used for both the aldehyde and the ketone. And because ketones can come anywhere, that means oxo can come anywhere. And so you must give the substituent names. And what you see is we have a 7, 6, or 6, 7. And so we've got a dioxo. Dioxo, die. We also have a hydroxy at carbon 3. And then lastly, we have this amine. Now, what's interesting is this amine has no simple name, right? It's not just amino. Off of the amino is an N methyl, right? Remember how we name substituents? that don't have common names, what you do is you take the name and place it in brackets. Well, this is an amino. But off of the amino is an N-methyl. And the brackets indicate there's no common name for it that you're using this IUPAC name. And where does the N-methyl appear on the main chain? Outside the brackets comes a 5. So we've got a 5, and we've got this N-methyl amino. We've got the hydroxy and the dioxyl. All right. For alphabetizing, we use the I, uh, sorry, the O, of the oxo, because di is not hyphenated. We use the H of hydroxy. 
And then we've got this thing in brackets. How do we name the substituent? What do we use here? I mean, the names in brackets can get quite long. Uh, could you use the A, uh, A of the root? Do you use the M? I'm going to be lenient if it's in brackets in this course and allow you to use either. I would prefer the amino. And I'll be quite frank with you. I have yet to find a clear explanation in the IUPAC rules that I have been able to find. So I will accept either M or A as your substituent name. You can use the first letter if you desire to do so. So no matter which way you go with the bracketed name, it will be fine. Now, a 7-carbon alkane chain is a heptane, and so this is a heptanoic acid. So the root name is heptanoic. Now you can say 1-heptanoic, that's fine. The O will definitely be last, even if you're using the M on the methyl. You should have a dioxo, no spaces. That would be a 6, 7. And then I'm going to use the A, so we'll have a 3-hydroxy. See if I can fit this in here. Tight fit, but it fits. And then, up front, we have the 5N-methyl-amino. And that is the hyphen here. So, 5N-methyl-amino, I'm using the A for alphabetizing. You certainly could use the M. Hydroxy, 3-hydroxy, 6,7-dioxoheptanoic acid. Notice how oxo is used for both the aldehyde and the ketone. Interesting. Okay, the last thing we want to look at is ester nomenclature. As I've indicated, an ester is a derivative of carboxylic acid. It is essentially where the C double bond O, single bond O, is inserted into a carbon-carbon chain. So my R groups here are carbons. And so these are named as if they were carboxylic acids. Let's look at what I mean by this. Suppose you had the following ester group. Before I try to name it, I try to picture what kind of carboxylic acid this came from. By taking the group attached to singly bonded oxygen and changing that whole group to an H. In other words, on scrap paper, I would draw the following. And I would name it. That molecule is ethanoic acid. So, the ester I'm trying to name is a molecule that came from ethanoic acid, where I replaced the H with a CH3. When naming esters, you take the derivative acid name and drop the ic acid, get rid of the ic acid, and add A-T-E. So up here, this is named as an ethanoate. And in fact, the ethanoate simply refers to, I'll draw a box in red, around this part of the molecule. Here is the ethanoate. So that still leaves the methyl group to name. And since it's the group attached to singly bonded oxygen, it's named out front separated from the main group by space and just called methyl ethanoate. We've covered 
uh, quite a bit on simple ester nomenclature, um, carboxylic acid nomenclature, ketone nomenclature, aldehydes, amines. We have a few common names to go over. In the ketone area, common names that have been accepted by IUPAC, specialized names that you need to know. We've got a couple that you should learn. This molecule is referred to as benzo -phenone. It's a ketone name, and you need to know it. Uh, another ketone that you need to know is this guy. This guy is acetophenone. Looks like half an acetone with a benzene ring stuck on it. Acetophenone. And then, for carboxylic acids, benzene ring with a carboxylic acid. Benzene ring named as car with carboxylic acid is named as benzoic acid. And so an ester derived from benzoic acid would be this molecule. Now, you have to be very careful when naming such molecules on a quiz because I'm going to draw this other molecule. And a lot of people will get the names mixed up and they will name this molecule as the one on the left, and they're not the same thing. Let's look at them carefully. The first molecule, again, if I use red to draw the derivative carboxylic acid, is derived from benzoic acid. If I replace the CH3, put an H on it, I've got benzoic acid. That is not the case for this molecule. If I replace this group, the single bonded oxygen group with an H, I don't get benzoic acid. This is acetic acid or ethanoic acid. So it could be common name acetate or IUPAC name ethanoic. So be careful. Don't name something benzoic acid when it's not. What you have here then, benzoic acid becomes a benzoate. And out front comes methyl. That's the group attached to, to the oxygen, separated by a space. What we have here, we have our Ethanoate, well, let's, IUPAC would be ethanoate. Let's stick with IUPAC. Ethanoate. And what's this alkyl group? What's a benzene when it's named as an alkyl? It's a phenyl. Phenyl ethanoate is a completely different molecule than methyl benzoate. Be, beware what is attached to the oxygen and what is not when naming esters. One last thing with regards to carboxylic acids. This will be important a little later on. Again, when naming a carboxylic acid, Find the longest carbon chain, you name the alkane, 
drop the E in adoic acid. But if the carboxylic acid is off a ring, this guy has a special name that's accepted. So it doesn't really apply. But where there is no special name, or the common name's not expected, the IUPAC uses a different system. What it names rings as are the full ring name. What is that ring called? Well, that's called a benzene. And then it adds the word carboxylic acid. If there's two of them, it's dicarboxylic acid. So if if benzoic acid was not accepted by IUPAC, this guy would have been called benzene carboxylic acid. But instead of calling it benzene carboxylic acid, benzoic acid is just used more. It's just been accepted. The common name is acceptable. In this case, however, the common name, which is phthalic acid, okay, and you don't need to know that right now, is not as prevalent. And so the IUPAC name names that as benzene and says we shall call it a dicarboxylic acid. So benzene dicarboxylic acid. So the nomenclature is pretty easy. The only hard part about it is that it's different from the chain. You name the ring and then you just use carboxylic acid. And you put a 1, 2 in front of it if they're beside each other on the ring. Or if you insert the name, it's benzene 1, 2 dicarboxylic acid. Now, whenever you have a ring, I mean, if it was not benzene, if it was cyclohexane, it would be the same thing. It would be cyclohexane 1,2-dicarboxylic acid if you had the two CO2Hs here. Okay. So uh, nomenclature for carboxylic acids off of rings is different than the straight chain nomenclature. And we're actually going to cover this in far more detail when we actually cover carboxylic acids in second semester. But I did want you to be aware of it so you could anticipate this twist or change as we come to it. All right, we've covered a lot in this Scribblecast lecture. We've looked at amine nomenclature. Amines under IUPAC are called uh, alkanamines. All right, we name the chain. If it's a methyl group, it's methanamine. The common name names them as al alkyls, methylamine. In, in the case of substituents on amines, if there's a direct substituent on a nitrogen, we localize it off of the nitrogen by using the prefix N instead of a number. Okay, so we'd say NN dimethylaniline. Uh, when we went on and uh, conducted a aldehyde nomenclature, we learned that the alkane root drops the E and adds AL. You have to be very careful when you write these to make sure you make your A look like an A and not an O. We then went on to ketone uh, nomenclature and ketones drop the alkane root E and add ON. When you have a priority group on with a, a ketone and an aldehyde present and the aldehyde is prevalent, you, as priority, you use the prefix oxo for the ketone. Carboxylic acids are named as oic acids, and esters are named as derivative carboxylic acids. They're named from the carboxylic acid by dropping the ic acid and adding eight. And then the group attached to the oxygen is brought out front, separated by space, and named as an alkyl. That's a lot to cover in one Scribblecast. I suggest you take time to look at the Scribblecast after listening to it. Go back and try naming some of these compounds yourself. Make sure that you not only understand what you see, 
but that you actually can write it out and do it. 